2019 08. Um, I've recently learned that while I don't have a conflict, I do happen to know the members in this case. So I'm going to recuse myself, and um, our co chairman, uh, Commissioner uh, Hightower, will um, present this case. And I will recuse myself. Okay, as you just heard, the, uh, the chair has accused itself on this case, so we will proceed with uh, case REZ 201908. <coughs> Ms. Craney, can you tell us about it? Okay. This is a request to change the zoning of approximately 14 acres of a, about a 36 acre parcel off of the Academy from R21 to RA. <coughs> The remaining portion of that parcel is already RA. This would essentially create a single zone parcel instead of a split zone. The motivation behind the request is, is to create an outdoor recreation facility. Concerning the comprehensive plan and future development map, the subject property is within the urban service area and depicted as in a suburban character area. RA zoning is listed as a permitted zoning district within the suburban character area. The existing RA zoning will also allow for the proposed use. RA zoning is adjacent to the subject property to the south and to the east. The western boundary is the central of Georgia rail line, and beyond that is Freedom Park. Adjacent to the north of the subject property is the Crestwood subdivision. The subject property will be required to connect to county water and sewer. <coughs> the TRC considered this request and had no objectionable comments. Staff found the request consistent with the comprehensive plan and encourages a recommendation of approval. We have just recently, this afternoon after about four, received some emails in opposition to this request. Thank you, Ms. Rini. Um, do the commissioners have any questions for staff at this time? Did I hear you say that the uh, connection to uh, County Board and Sewer is for mm -hmm. conditions? Any other questions from the commissioners? Okay, since there are no questions from the commissioners, we will now enter the public hearing portion of case REZ 2019-08. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Josh Jason. Josh Knudsen. Yes, sir. And, and your address, address please. is 5133 Rocky Ford Road. I also do it You can slide that microphone down a little bit. Are you ready? Yes, whenever you're ready, please go ahead. So I'm actually going to be a part owner in this property. And when we first saw it, you know, the first thing we noticed was obviously the location, it's a good location for anything that you want to be close to town, but one of our concerns was being next to a neighbor. You know, we want your neighbors to be happy with you, and we also want to be happy with your neighbors. So looking at the property, we noticed that it was obviously heavily wooded, and we wanted to be able to utilize that as much as possible to create a natural buffer between them and our <coughs> recreation activities. So um, obviously we want to use, utilize as much space as possible, but one of the more things, we end up deciding to leave um, the 150 foot buffer, which is recommended in code. Um, and we actually want to leave that completely untouched, no mulching, nothing of that nature. That way, anybody in the neighborhood you know, wouldn't see the recreation facility, they wouldn't see any activities that were going on. Um, when me and Deborah Cullet um, from the county actually went out and walked the property and were discussing these, these, uh, these distances. At 50 feet of woods, you couldn't even see the homes um, on the other side of the property line. And so we, I felt at that time the 150 feet buffer you know, would definitely serve the purpose of you know, buffering you know, between us and the neighborhood. And allowing them to not really even see anything that would be going on. Um, this is going to be completely outdoors. Um, it's going to be uh, an airsoft arena. So I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with that. It's like paintball, but it's it's uh, biodegradable weeds. Um, very quiet. They're uh, 
kids are going to be playing games where they shoot each other with these guns. And um, our plan is obviously to leave as much as possible to not only buffer visually uh, sound, which there aren't that much created, and then also any projectiles. And our plan is to leave that buffer and then also put up the, uh, some netting, but also just be a secondary. But again, our main focus is obviously we want to be successful in what we're doing, but we also want the people that are also going to be affected by this, that aren't necessarily a part of it, to be happy with it as well. And another thing, um, you know, when you think about this, you don't want to think any negative about it. You don't want to think that it won't succeed. Um, but our backup plan, um, we wouldn't sure what it would be, but we wouldn't want to affect the property very much, so our plan is to not cut down the clear cut anything to make these uh, to make this area we want to leave as much trees as possible. Anything that we really have to get a permit to cut down, we don't want to do it. Um, we may have to in certain instances, but it's very very minimal on that. That way if it doesn't work, we clean everything up and keep it the way it is, which means it's beautiful. Um, and I know that the main concern of the people that are living north of it is that they're going to see it and hear it on a daily basis, but that really will not be the case. That's number one in our agenda to make sure that they're comfortable um, when we are in operation. Go ahead. You said you had 150 feet lost. I'm concerned about the noise of the residents that live there and also the time of day. You know, we've got a resident that has to go to work in the morning. Sure. So, how long, what should our schedule is going to be? So, right now we're shooting for Friday evening, Saturday during the day, and then Sunday during the day as well. So, Friday evening we're thinking somewhere around, starting around 4 or 5 o'clock, and ending around 9 or 10. Um, on Saturday we're looking at starting somewhere around 9 a.m., and then finishing up around 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday is looking around starting about 12 or 1 p.m. and then ending at uh, 6 or 7 p.m. So on those days like Sunday where they have to be on the work, and there's some people working on weekends, but we're closing down early. And the reason for you know staying up a little bit Friday night is just, you know, people still have to work or go to school. So we're trying to get some time. So is there going to be, I know you said aerosol, so I'm familiar with yeah. uh, but is there going to be any type of explosions or loud noises, you know, uh, simulated battle type things other than the aerosol? Yes. Um, you know, I'm not saying that uh, there are 100 people. Uh, that would be 
these guys. I mean, if the entire thing was developed, I'm not really sure. Um, not how tomorrow, for but then they got popularity. Right. Um, Any other questions for the commissioners for the speaker? Thank you, Mr. Knapp. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on behalf of this issue, in favor of this issue, this application? Is there anyone here who would wish to speak against this application? Please come forward. State your name and address, please, for the record. Adam Hill, uh, 3473 Farmers Way. Adam Hill. Hill. And your address? 3473 Farmers Way. Thank you. Please proceed. All right. Thank you guys for letting us come out here. Um, as I said, I'm a resident of the neighborhood. My house actually backs up to the, uh, to the proposed fence line. First and foremost, we were only given about seven days notice that this was actually occurring. We just received the notice on Monday in the mail. Uh, that was the first that we had heard of it. The notices on the street are not easily seen. They're off to the, to the side of the road behind the for sale sign for the property. So no one was actually aware of it until we received the notice on Monday. That was going into the graduation week where all the kids are graduating, everybody's getting ready for summer vacation, there wasn't a lot of attention being being shown, people were getting ready to leave town, and then this meeting got scheduled the day after a holiday weekend. So we were given maybe five days actual notice to organize anything, to do any research on what Airsoft actually is, what impact it could possibly have on our property values, what it's going to do to our neighborhood, and how that's going to impact how people actually feel about it, whether it's will continue to remain a desirable neighborhood to live in. Uh, so I am absolutely vehemently opposed to the idea of creating a, an outdoor airsoft arena. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the way airsoft uh, rifles actually look, they look identical to actual weapons. AR-15s, AK-47s, any type of pistol that you could, could imagine. They even have bazooka or you know rocket launcher. As part of, of as part of airsoft, he's asking to provide access to nothing but mostly young men <coughs> or middle-aged men. It's not kids. You have to be at a minimum 10 years old to even participate in that. You have to actually have an adult to be there with you. At 17, you have you can sign have your parents sign a waiver, and then you can do it on your own. So the majority of the people that will actually be participating in this in this sport are middle-aged adults to young males, and they will be directly along the side of our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is approximately 80% military. And we, Moody Air Force Base is one of the most highly deployed bases in the United States. So there are an untold number of women and children who are at home alone, and the last thing we need next to our neighborhood is a, a war zone with realistic looking weapons. And Potentially up to 150, I'd say probably more. Potentially, if, as it got bigger, you could have 200 young men wandering the woods behind our houses. That doesn't make me feel safe. I'm not sure any of you guys would would be okay with that being put behind your house when you're out of town. I'm just in a sales position myself. I'm out of town often, and I do not feel safe having that number of, of people wandering the woods with a 150 foot barrier. My, my yard is not even 25 yards to the back of my fence. Another 150 feet is nothing. That, and if you, you're putting, I don't, I'm not sure where they're putting their parking lot. They won't, they've asked for a 50 lot parking lot, a 50 spot parking lot. Where is that going to be located? Is it going to be directly behind my house? None of that stuff has been, been told to us. It, in fact, the, the entire way this was gone about, seems very underhanded and sneaky to me. They tried to hide it. They didn't want to tell us what, what they were trying to put in. This was only due to the fact that uh, we have great neighbors who have done an enormous amount of research in a very, very short amount of time that was given to us to figure out. So we only have a very small portion of people here because half of our homeowners are 
deployed overseas. They don't have the ability to be here and be represented. So the, the few of us that we were able to make it here after work are, are here to, to, to oppose every every ounce of this, this idea of the rezoning. We live in a very, very nice, quiet neighborhood. We appreciate that. That's what, you know, we have 135 houses in our neighborhood. The average value of our home is about 180000 That's $22 million worth of property that we pay taxes on. Not a single person in our neighborhood is, is for this idea and for this thing. But we weren't given the proper amount of time to actually organize ourselves in a way that, that I felt necessary to, to, to combat this. So I personally ask you guys to shoot this idea down here today, recommend it not move forward, so we don't have to spend all of our time outside of work taking care of everything that we do to, to have to combat this ridiculous request. That's all. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners for Mr. Cowell? Not, not a question, but a statement. Uh, I'm sure the signs have been up for a while. I've never known the county not to put them up. We're, we don't work for the county here. We're all strictly volunteer. Yes, and I, I, I'm going to have to defend our, our county people because uh, I don't think anything was done knowingly by anybody to circumvent y'all's due process. So please, uh, I, it's just it's unnerving to hear it because I know how hard our county people work. Well, and I would say, speaking to, to multiple people, my neighbors, this well, is, I'm, this I'm, is I'm, a common feeling amongst us at this time. Well, all I'm speaking like, for is myself, sir. So I don't know if anybody else on the board agrees or not. That's up to them. But uh, you know, I just I don't think that that is, is a fair assessment of our of our county personnel. Is that all, Mr. Cale? Yes, sir. Any other questions from the commissioners for Mr. Cale? Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak against this application? Oh, sir. What? Okay, well, please come forward, state your name. Uh, based on the time we have, you'll be the last speaker, unfortunately. Yeah, about five minutes, other, so. My name is Laura Pepler. I live at 3497 Farmers Way, uh, Valdosta, Georgia, 31605. My property also uh, borders the proposed zoning change, and I also uh, represent my husband, who just deployed today to Afghanistan. Uh, I do have power of attorney to represent him and uh, oppose this. I don't want to over. I do agree with everything that was already said, so I'm not going to repeat that. I do would like to know if everyone was given notice. I don't believe everyone on Farmer's Way whose property does it but receive the notice because I know someone from Germany did not. Uh, they do not live here right now. They're renting their property and they did not receive notice. Uh, I also would like proof of that. I also would like to say that I would like it pushed down the road so that we may hire an attorney to research this. Um, I do feel that viewing it is not the only issue. I have a young daughter who is special needs and adopted and she is has anxiety issues, and I know there are veterans that may have anxiety issues. I do not want to hear that, and I know the noise will travel, especially when the trees will lose their leaves. Uh, it's going to make a difference. Uh, I do feel that the reason we bought in Valdosta was to retire in a beautiful neighborhood that was very close to base because my husband is a volunteer civilian with the Air Force. He retired 14 years ago. We volunteered to go to Afghanistan. I am a veteran as well. And we wanted to go to a place that was a peaceful, calm neighborhood that uh, was a place that we could call home as a suburban environment. This, to me, is a not a suburban environment business and can be done elsewhere where there are other businesses like it, uh, not in disturbing the peace of our neighborhood. One of the things I'm concerned with is the traffic, uh, the roads, abutting us, Bemis Knights Academy and uh, Knights Landing have uh, numerous accidents at that intersection. The area is quite foggy at times because of the water in the area, and there have been some serious accidents, and I would just think that a number of people traveling that road would just increase the likelihood of us who use that road just having to deal with uh, high speeds and a lot of traffic. 
Also, not all pellets are biodegradable. So I, uh, they would have to be sure to buy biodegradable pellets, which are more expensive. Uh, and there's also things called green gas and other additions to the guns that you can have that can be smelled, CO2 smell and that. I also want, my final closing thing is to make sure that we have some control over what goes on if this business fails. There could be a racetrack back there. There could be a dirt bike trail. There could be a lot of different businesses that fall under outdoor rec that then they may not need approval for. But we are at risk of having something else that is loud or obnoxious that we cannot say no to because it's already been resolved. This is the reason why that I feel, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a very bad idea. I forgot to mention they asked to use our fence. Uh, it's a six foot fence with gaps. It's at least six years old on my property. I don't know about others, but it is not. A, I don't want my fence damaged and then I'm responsible to fix it. Uh, I would think the buffer and then a much larger fence would need to be done uh, in any case, for any outdoor activity, but I do not agree with uh, this at all. Thank you. Uh, one question. I just I appreciate you mentioned uh, one thing uh, about somebody turning into something else if it goes and the fact is is the ethical agriculture is a very fine defined about what you can put there. So it's not a commercial atmosphere that somebody can put there. Uh, and just one more quick thing and I, and I see where you're at, but twenty two of the acres that are there now, he can do it right this second. He just he just wants to encompass the whole thing. So just just, just, well, just I, I, I understand that. And um, I that's my concern that it would turn into something larger. If he gets it all, he could possibly uh, have more incentive to do more. Thank you. Ms. Pepper, oh. any other questions from the commissioner for Ms. Pepper while she's at the dive? Uh, your point about the notice is well taken. I do not know the answer, but Ms. Ms. Trini's staff will be happy to work with you and provide any answers to you on that. I mean, we, we want you to be informed and have your information. So would you please work with our office and uh, and okay, I, I know she'll be able to provide you the, all the details. Uh, unfortunately, time has expired for the public hearing portion on this application. Uh, I'll say one gentleman, do you raise your hand yet? If you have a quick question, just have to be quick. Okay, that's fine. My name is Brad Mendel. I'm at 3594 Buffalo. Well, I'm not up against that area, I wasn't given a notice at all. And I own a house in that area. I am in the area. I actually just got back to this point. I can tell you there's some gentlemen back there and they have AR 15s. My wife is trained to end up doing whatever she has to do. They try to do an our home. I am a police officer in the military. All of this stuff that's going on here is going to attract a lot of things. With this back end, People can get back there, and they can also continue to get back there. I have two young children as well in my home. One of them gets hit by that, I'm suing the entire company, because it's going to be on their head. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mando. Any, are there any other questions or comments from the commissioners uh, on the general application or case? Hearing none. The chair will now entertain a motion on case REZ 2019. We, we get to talk about it a motion. I just asked if there were any discussion. Oh, I thought you were talking about from them. No, I said from the commission. Well, I do have something to say okay. about this. Uh, I understand where y'all are coming from, believe me. Uh, and at first, I was not, when we first learned about this in our work session, I wasn't concerned that much about it. For some of the I, for some of the points that have been brought up, uh, I, I, I I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, so, uh, but we're we're right out there in the middle of an area that's being constantly developed for housing, and has been for years, and probably will continue. Uh, as we all know, there's other developable land around there, and there's. And there's a lot of other places in Lowndes County, I think, that would be a lot more suitable for this project. Uh, where it's not going to back up to an existing established subdivision. Uh, so, 
that's that's what I think about it. I don't know what y'all think, but, you know. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's my two cents. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Are there any other comments or discussion among the commissioners? Well, I'll, just, I'll just say we're doing you know, I just think about it as important to the purposes they were going to try Oh, yes, I remember that. Yes, but but also, that's, on the, that's even further away from where it is now. That's correct. If we don't, if we don't pass this zoning, it at least puts it on the back side of this existing property and doesn't back right up to most of the houses. So, that's, you know, we're not going to, you know, I, I don't think, uh, like I said, once this gets started, you know, what's, what's going to go to the south of this? Is, is there long range plans for another subdivision in there? That it may, you know, may not, we don't know. Uh, so, that was just my viewpoint on it. And I understand what you're saying, but yes. Anything else, Commissioner? I'm sorry, the public hearing portion is over. I can't recognize you. I apologize. That's just those are the rules. So, well, if, I, if, um, can I ask the first presenter a question, sir? Sure. I'm talking about Josh. Josh, you, could you approach me, sir? Absolutely. You have the right to do that. I, I, I'm just curious, and then I, and I see everybody's uh, uh, concern here or not. The, the 12 acres that you're 11 acres for the 14 acres that you see is plotted out up there. Yes. Do you <coughs> intend to have that range there, or is that going to be for the residents and our park? So the park that's R21 will not be used for um, the area that we're going to be planning. The reason we want it to be done is if you go back to the area photo, um, the cleared portion of the property um, right there where the road <coughs> goes around, we want to be able to park there. You know, the reason why I want to get some of that to park in, approximately a acre, is so we don't have to tear down a bunch of trees to park. Um, and so all that up there in the top right corner won't be used at all. My family's going to be living there. We have children that are four and six years old. Um, and uh, my grandma, who's in her 70s, they have the same concerns that, that these people have. And I want to address that with them. So I don't want to be playing around my grandma's house and you know we're gonna have a hundred foot buffer, we're gonna have a twenty foot net that goes all the way around that part of the <coughs> and all this. Where, where's it gonna be at you So it's gonna back up those five blocks? Yes, sir, for sure. So you'll have a hundred fifty foot buffer of the untouchables and a twenty foot net. Um, and that will actually follow the north portion of the property onto the east and also part of the west. What's the noise generated? Hardly the have you ever shot a radio? I asked what kind of noise is generated from the, oh, from it's, the it's a, it's air shot. It's, it's shot out of top of air. There's not like a gap going off for you. And to address the biocritical, we know, we know that we have wetlands here and have a waterway that's maintained by our county. My plan is to use nothing but biocritical bees. People cannot bring their own bees in. And the beauties I will sell are actually the same price as regular beauties. So I'm going to be very poor and ask you a question. Yes, you, you just stated to the public record that the R21 section, now that you want to get uh, turned into this R80 section, this, this 14 acres, whatever, that you have no plans to use that for this range. So this, I have submitted a site plan. So right there where it butts up in the middle. There may be a slight sliver of use. Just I, I, I need to know, is there going to be any in R21 present? I mean, a little bit, yes, but not up against the house as well. So very little. Along the side. Yeah, I don't have time to do it. Along, yeah, along the southern part of the R21, we'll, we'll, some of it will be used. Any other questions for Mr. Knudsen? Well, yes, if he's, since he's here. Now, have you checked with the encroachment into the wetlands area? Like there's a lot of rules and regulations. That's a recharge area. Uh, so you may not be able to get into that area at all. I have to. Sir? I have to. Okay. Uh, uh, you can you can the they, just, <laughs> they frown over the lot. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Yes, now, I got one more question, and, and I'm going to be for this. If you if it's, if it's just a sliver, okay, and you can 
rearrange your sliver. Yes, sir. Why, why do you want to get the 14 acre grid zone for? Why do you just leave it like it is? Because you can't park on R21. Oh, is that true? You can't park on R21, from my understanding. Is that correct, Molly, or do you? That's true. That's true. That's true. But you also see those two green structures. Molly, can you answer that question? I, I cannot. I don't know the answer to the question. Molly, okay. thank you. If you see the two, or actually the four green structures. Only enough for you to I don't see how a commercial park lot would be allowed in residential. That's a county, that's a question for the county. I feel like we had a pre-application meeting with Mr. Vincent and we hashed out all these things. And we came to the best rezoning for his proposed use that we thought it would fit. So that's probably how we came up with a consolidated order. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. Thank you very much. So, if there are no other questions or comments from the commissioners, on this case, um, the chair will entertain a motion. We have one. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I would like to recommend denial on the case as presented because of the encroachment of the existing neighborhood to the north. Uh, you mean and, encroach, what do you mean? Sir? You mean well, just, just by, the, by the fact that it's there. Go ahead and finish your motion, then we can discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So just, you know, may, encroachment may not be the correct word, but it's proximity to the existing neighborhood. So your motion is for denial? For denial. Okay. Mr. Commissioner Hall has made a motion for denial on this case. Is there a second? It's recommendation for denial. Recommendation for denial. Is there a second on the motion? Mr. Commissioner Hall? Thank you, We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion by Commissioner Hall, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Is that four to three, Trent? Is it counting? It's three to three. Three to three. You're the, you're the chairman. No, I can't vote. You don't have to tie it. You don't have to tie it. Well, tie it. In a tie, then. In a tie, then. I'm against. I vote against. The recommendation. Or deny. The the uh, the recommendation of denial. Okay. So, is there any other motion? The chair will entertain any other motion than denial at this time. Can you just be clear about what the vote was on? I beg your pardon? Can you be clear about the vote was on? There was a motion by Commissioner Hall for denial of this case as presented, and a second, and that motion for denial failed, three to four. So now the chair is asking if there's another motion other than for denial. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve REZ 2019-008 by the approval that the uh, TOC has set up to approve this, this case. Okay, the commission by, uh, a motion by Commissioner Bailey for approval of this case. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Ball. All those in favor of the motion to recommend approval, please raise your hand. All those opposed? So the recommendation for approval has also failed. I'm going to have to get some guidance on this one, but where are we going? He meant to vote the other way the first time. He didn't understand it. He meant to vote the other way the Mr. first McClendon. time. Mr. McClendon. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. This, there's no participation by the audience at this point. I apologize. I think Mr. McClendon knew exactly how he voted. Didn't you? You, you voted against the approval? So, we uh, had a motion for denial that failed, and we had a motion for approval that failed. So, I don't know where we go, Matt, or Vinny, can you give it a other other motions that are in the realm of possibility, you might explore those, and if you're uncertain about 
your members being clear on the last vote, you can have a discussion with them to make sure everyone understood exactly what they're voting on. From here, it sounds like everyone did. That's my opinion as well. So, what did everyone do? Understand how they voted? So, you can ask for another motion. Um, another choice would be tabling. And aside from that, you would so we've reached a, we've reached the stalemate here. We've had a motion for denial, which failed. We had a motion for approval that failed. So can we revisit either of those motions? Yes, you can make a new motion. Yes, I would have some discussion first. Then they would have to be changed from how they originally were presented. Mm -hmm. Would that have to be amendments well, or uh, yeah. tack-ons or whatever? Well, I, you know, just, if we have to have a discussion, I mean, you know. Uh, Maybe, you know, I'd like to ask Mr. McClendon why he voted two different ways on it. Uh, you know, one for denial. Uh, if he's willing to answer that, that's fine. If you want to ask that? You know I voted two different ways. Yes, sir. I well, don't know I voted two different ways, so. I, I'm just asking, did you? I'm why are you singling me out? Well, you, one, with one vote you voted for the affirmative and one you voted for the negative. Mr. McClendon can answer that or not answer it. Okay, well, I'm okay. Right. Sorry, Mr. McClendon. Okay. So, is there any other form of a motion that, from the commissioners at this time on this particular case? I'd like to revisit. Or any revisit. further discussion? Oh. I would like to revisit my motion for denial. Please do so. I'd like to deny this request as presented because of its proximity to the neighborhood to the north. That's basically the same motion. Yes, sir, it is. I mean, you know, I, I can't change it in any way because that's the way I feel. I'm not sure you can bring the same motion twice. I don't, I'm not a parliamentarian to, to that extent. So. Usually after discussion, sometimes you can repeat a motion, but it's beginning to sound to at least this staff person's ears that there was not clarity on the motions. Okay, so Matt just explained that we can reconsider Commissioner Hall's new motion, which is basically the same motion for denial. You might revisit the two votes, okay. or at least one of them, and then maybe two, just for clarity's sake. Well, you know, the, and if it's the same result, I would recommend a discussion and maybe a third motion okay. for case. So you've made the motion. Yes. Is there a second to the new motion, the most recent motion on the floor, which was the recommendation for denial? Is there a second? Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion amongst the commissioners on the motion? Well, like I said before, you know, uh, I understand this, you know, the, the case presented by the people that are living there. Uh, unfortunately, this day and age, any time you deal with anything that looks like a weapon, is, it's traumatic for some people. I don't necessarily agree or understand, but I, I know that it's the case. That's that's my case. Uh, anybody else? Mr. Graham, do you have something? No. Okay. okay, so we've had a motion and a second. There is no further discussion. We will vote on the motion, which is basically a repeat of the motion for denial, recommendation of denial. All those in favor of the motion for recommendation of denial, please raise your hand. That's Three votes, I believe. All those against the motion for recommendation of denial, please raise your hand. Three votes. And, Thank you. And I also vote against the motion for denial. So here we're back at the same place. Okay. So do we ask for another motion? Yes. Thank you. Is there any other motion? No, I will repeat my motion that I made earlier on the case. David Cole was not on the 20 it's a motion by Commissioner Bailey for recommendation of approval as presented by staff. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All right. Commissioner Bob. Any discussion amongst the commissioners on the motion is, which has been seconded? This is the this recommendation is, uh, for approval. Commissioner McClendon, this would be a motion to approve. A, rec a recommendation to the county commissioners based on staff report of this matter. All those in favor of a recommendation of approval, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Recommendation fails again. This 
this a opposed vote? Or? Did you I, I didn't vote either way. Oh, you didn't abstain? Or? I, I, I didn't vote either way, and I'm sitting there and I'm wondering could we not massage the way this layout is? So that. Okay, let me. Did, first, did you, did you not want to vote on the recommendation for a I didn't want okay, to vote. Okay, you not. So, it, Commissioner uh, McClendon has abstained to this point. Right. Okay, now we're because, going to have a discussion again. Because I'm looking at some folk that took the hard earned money. Pick up a little. I said I'm looking at the fact that some people took their hard earned money and they missed it, maybe a couple of meals trying to stretch it. And unless we look at all of this and don't disturb what is now currently in place, we might want to think about uh, rearranging this layout so that it don't be a heartburn to someone. It may be uh, that you put it on the other side uh, where there is no owners. And you say, yes, maybe somebody else will come in and put it in. Of course. That's the chance that you take when you look at future. But right now, you've got a neighborhood. Why? Are we going to disturb this neighborhood? And if I can, if I can get my head around that, I'm fine. So, Commissioner McClendon, do you have any suggestions on what might be done in the form of a motion or? Mm -hmm. What? Just a second. What would be the reason? If we get down to the nitty gritty, what is the reason why it has to be here? You see, it, when we look at why it is that it must be right there, in other words, I would say to you, what is so important that you make my baby wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning or couldn't get to sleep or whatever. Let us try to think not only can we do, but let us think what can be done for the good of the neighborhood. Because right now, we're ending up going away as upset folk and nobody getting any, any sense. So, Satisfied. Commissioner McClendon, I respectfully ask, do you have a, anything you'd like to put in the form of a motion at this time or not? Just, just politely ask it for me. Uh, I don't have my head just right to get the motion right. Okay. But, I understand. Okay. okay. So we've had, the, yes, sir, Commissioner Graham. I would like to recommend that this be taken. The reason for it, what's going on in the world today? Weapons, schools, and everything. I realize this is aerosol. I'm recommending that we do a little bit more investigating what type of this weapon. I'm familiar with the aerosol guns. All of them. The ones that they party shirts out at the games and everything else. I think we need a little bit more information on this, especially what's going on schools with weapons today. I recommend that this be tabled for you put that in the form of a motion that we table until our next meeting? I put this in a motion okay. uh, form that we will table this to the next meeting. I personally like to do some more research on this. Understood. I'm familiar with all type of weapons I think. Well thank you. So Commissioner Graham has made a motion for tabling. Mm -hmm. Tabling this uh, case until the next meeting. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Hall. Is there any discussion amongst the commissioners regarding Commissioner Graham? That discussion is standing. That's a question. That's a question. I'm just curious. Could, could this be rezoned to the, what they're trying to get it done to in the residential agriculture and not state of the region? 
Could you just get it rezoned from the D2 residential agriculture without just get it done because the land that high is already that way? Yeah. Commissioner. So you did not have to say what you're going to do with the, it. Right. The motivation behind the rezoning was, was he was very upfront and he said, I want to rezone for this. If he had chosen not to say that, then he could have just said, I want to rezone the whole thing to RA. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. Okay, and if I may, Chairman, just to add on to that, the request before you is a rezoning request. It is not approval of a site plan. It's not approval of a specific use. It is a rezoning from one category to another. The applicant's stated motivation or reason is because of a proposed use. The site plan that is shown to you is for informational purposes only, right. it, and unless you put conditions on a zoning change, like conditional zoning, it's just the sign. Understood. Well, thank you. So, we have a motion on the floor which has been seconded. Is there no other discussion amongst commissioners? All those in favor of Commissioner Graham's motion to table, please raise your hand.